So, the next doctor is... Shooty Gatwa. Alright. Well, let's go through this. Here we are at Cosmic Book News, where it announces that the BBC announced <laughs> the future is here, as uh, Shudi Gatwa is set to become the 14th Time Lord. You know, not anymore unless you fix a certain timeless child plot. Otherwise, no, not. Not the Time Lord, no. And take charge of the TARDIS. So, uh, there there he is. I've never heard of the guy. Apparently, he's been in that, uh, yeah, Netflix's Sex Education series. Um, so, he's a Scottish actor, born in Rwanda. And, uh, well, apparently that's what he's most recently uh, done. And um, so, there you go. That's uh, the new Doctor. So, uh, he takes over for Jody, who departs the show in the fall. And not a moment too soon. Russell D. Davies returns as showrunner with Shooty Gatwa as the new 14th Time Lord. But <laughs> so for this, uh, the Doctor Who 60th anniversary. So I, because now I'm wondering, will he appear at the end of Jody's final episode, like they usually do for most of them? I mean, uh, you know, obviously uh, Troughton, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, well, between him and uh, Pertwee. And so it's, it's, the show could fade to, to black, and then you come to the, the special and uh, wakes up, and it's uh, it's shooty. Uh, or do you think they would even, like like some amount of time has passed on, <laughs> he just shows up and he's in whatever outfit he's got and all that. And uh, that's that. They just don't talk about it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I kind of like what happened when the uh, new new Who started in 2005, where it's just uh, you know Christopher Eccleston shows up and oh well, there you go, something happened in between. And it was a time war, and that's that. Uh, I would rather not. Just go ahead and, uh, and hopefully they can film a brief uh, regeneration scene you know, where he shows up there and, and all that stuff. But uh, can't call him a Time Lord unless you retcon that thing. And I don't care who you cast as the next Doctor. The main thing is that god-awful timeless child nonsense that uh, Chibnall did. Uh, if, you, if you don't do that, then I, I'm not interested. I, I don't care how good this guy is in the role. I don't care uh, how uh, clever that uh, Russell T. Davies is. And, of course, he's easily a far better writer than Chibnall could ever hope to be. But when you've got a steaming pile <laughs> of crap left over from the previous, <laughs> of uh, just lore-destroying, literally lore-destroying uh, 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 elements like that, it, it, it's just it's pointless. So, anyway, uh, so he gave his statement, that, you know, he's all proud of it and uh, honored and, uh, you know, flattered and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and and enjoys uh, working with uh, Russell T. Davies. He's almost as iconic as the Doctor himself. And sure enough, as it is as it stands now, uh, easily the best of the showrunners that they've had for the new uh, for New Who, which is well, uh, really get, really getting old now. <laughs> but but uh, it's his dream come true and all that. And uh, it says his writing is dynamic, exciting, incredibly intelligent, and fizzing with danger <laughs> so yeah all right uh <laughs> hey maybe there'll be more uh excitement and cliffhanger danger and action in the new doctor who series I don't know. so anyway uh davy said the future's here and, and, and it's shooty sometimes talent walks through the door and it's so bright and bold and brilliant i just stand back in awe and thank my lucky stars shooty dazzled us seized hold of the doctor and owned those tardis keys in seconds it's an honor to work with him and a hoot i can't wait to get started so uh charlotte moore chief content officer who he has an incredible dynamism he's striking and fearless young actor whose talent yeah but all you know he's the greatest thing since sliced bread and all that stuff <laughs> And uh, he, uh, this was posted on Instagram. So two hearts, get it? Yeah. Plus a blue box. Oh, shooty. So there you go. Maybe that'll be like a, a, one of the merchandising t-shirts. 
<laughs> just pull that around. That'll probably put a little, maybe a little light thing on top. Anywho, so the obvious things. Well, did you notice he's black? <laughs> so, so he's like, well, here we go with tokenism and whatnot. Uh, in the current era, it's impossible uh, not to have that uh, part of the discussion, and that's part of the damage done by uh, the, the woke era and all that. It's what happened to Jody. That's all she was there for. It was not discussed within the story. They didn't uh, use it for storytelling purposes the, uh, to, to explore regeneration and stuff like that. Could have done all kinds of stuff with that. Uh, of course, they'll say, Whoa, Thomas Child Explorer! Yeah, it, it, this slap job episode where the master just tells you, and this is the story, the end. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, no, lazy crap. There's nothing praiseworthy there whatsoever. Um, and more to the point of uh, tokenism, especially when it comes to people that aren't white. Uh, of course, some of the other announcements on other sites was that he'll be the first uh, non white. Uh, actor to play the role, and I'm someone said the lead role. I'm guessing is how they're uh, 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 categorizing this <laughs> because he's not the first person of color, as as it were, uh, to to play the role. There's Joe Martin, and just for the purposes of continuity and to fix the mess of leaving Joe Martin's doctor as a pre Hartnell or pre. Pertwee, some people wanted him to be sandwiched in between Troughton and Pertwee and that sort of thing. Uh, no, I thought it would be much better if she was a future doctor. I suppose they could still do it in some little thing, but to, to, she was completely tokenized. Uh, thrown in there so you could have Chris Chibnall cast first non-white doctor, you know, and, and that's all it was for. And so it's one episode. She has a few cameos here after that, and then it's done. I think she gets a comic book <laughs> and maybe some big finished stories. I don't know. But, uh, and that's what it was. Here, well, it's a little different. So I don't know if the thinking goes in, well, I want it to be a male doctor. Let's move on from the female doctor. So you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't just put. Uh, another white guy in there. Uh, and and it's, it's still some BBC hooks in this. I know it's been pretty much completely, it's under creative control for uh, Bad Wolf, which was then bought by Sony Pictures. And so that's some of the elements there. It says, oh, there might be some hope for some good Doctor Who. And uh, that one of these things, you can't help but conclude that this is a nod to uh, Wokedom. It's, oh, no, no, look, look, we're, you know, we're still shaking things up and being progressive and whatever crap, you know, uh, what have one would hope not, but it's, it's, a, hopefully I have not seen this guy's work. Uh, hopefully he's, he is as good as they say he is, and he's got some good ideas and they gave him some scripts, uh, that plays out well to the character. And uh, then that would uh, be fine. And the, and the fact that yes, He's getting a full on uh, series with the character, unlike poor Miss Martin, who didn't. That's that's the that's the difference you can give it here, where this is not a complete uh, a tokenizing of race and what have you. Um, so you know, I'm still willing to to give this show a, a shot. I think Russell T. Davies has earned the right for that shot. You know, to see that he really can turn it around. And uh, I again. I, don't, I know nothing about this guy. He may be great. I, I don't know. Well, you know. We'll see about that. As far as regeneration goes, and I, it's something that I think should have been dealt with. Uh, uh, the female doctor was an opportunity to, to delve into that and, and, and uh, other aspects and, and, and what it is. I mean, the obvious thing would have been that the DNA is in there. And uh, depending on how many times you can regenerate, sooner or later, uh, that'll happen. Um, the same plays into here. Uh, that in somewhere in your background, you know, <laughs> you know, there's DNA strains in there, so it pops up, you know. Of course, the problem with going in through that for the science fiction, which is science fiction, is to be rooted in some scientific uh, uh, thought or, or theory or concept or what have you, what you do know, uh, certainly when it comes to the DNA and how many 
uh, you go far back into your lineage and you'll find there's different races and all that sort of thing. Um, but with the establishment of how many uh, doctors there have been, well, <laughs> it stands to reason sooner or later you're going to get back to just some dumb white guy. And that would be the, the, the play out for it. So um, the show's got to bounce back uh, and hopefully it can happen. So uh, it, 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 he, he's owed a shot here. Uh, our both men here are for this to see that certainly uh, Russell T. Davies reputation on this. He was uh, often saying he would never come back. But the state of Doctor Who was so bad, this was probably the only shot they really had at trying to save it. And uh, so uh, my guess is the fear of never coming back was that he couldn't live up to what he had already achieved. <laughs> uh, but then again, it could be that the scenario was that he wouldn't really have the creative control he would have wanted. Uh, apparently he has it. Maybe the casting had to be a non-white guy, and that's just the way it is. If he wanted a man to be the in the role, that was the deal. Maybe it, you know, it's hard not to think it because of what's been going on, you know. Uh, but if that's all the price to pay or whatever it was, fine, you know. But the rest of it is all him. This could work. This could work out. It's it, it's 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 sad that it's it's the state of affairs that it is. That you can't just take it, okay, well, let's see what this guy does. And that's it. Uh, you can't. Awokedom has done this. This is the the damage and destruction that it has wrought and wants to keep everybody divided at each other and that sort of thing. And that's the nature of it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'll see what happens. And the 60th anniversary, I'm wondering how they're going to do that. I'm kind of hoping it would actually be in two parts or something like that, you know. Um, not just all one movie or whatever. And uh, returning doctors and all that sort of stuff. And uh, and then uh, uh, Shooty here is uh, off running, you know. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. As for what outfit he'll get, I don't know. I did these images here. <laughs> One's more elegant and stuff, but I guess it's too close to the Peter Capaldi's doctor. Although I think Peter Capaldi's outfit was the absolute best. Certainly of the new Who stuff. And, uh, um, but this other one, I don't know, it's almost, uh, <laughs> Colin Baker's outfit, but even now, no one's ever going to top Colin Baker's crazy outfit. I mean, it's poor Colin Baker, uh, boy, did he get screwed over, but yeah, what are they going to do? But anyway, hopefully, uh, uh, Mr. Gottwa here will not be and, uh, can deliver, uh, a good run as the doctor. And hopefully gets a chance to uh, do a story that retcons timeless. Show. You do that, and uh, boy, I'm a big fan of, of Shooty here. <laughs> you do that, oh boy, I'm on board. And uh, and uh, yeah, it gets to actually be the 14th timeline. Now you got to do that. You got to. There's no way around it. Uh, and then uh, that'll go a long way to uh, restore Doctor Who. So anyway, we'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs>